Hey entrepreneurs, let's talk about risk. So how does risk impact your productivity? Well, when it comes to money, let's just start there. With money, one of the things you can do to have the most flexibility and, and decrease your risk is to go to cash, right? So if the stock market or Bitcoin or whatever takes a big crash and you have a lot of cash, that gives you flexibility, it gives you options. You can use that cash to pay your bills for a while. You can use it to invest while things are low. And, and yet that comes with a cost, right? When you have a lot of cash, that's money that's not working for you. It's, and it's probably losing money if there's inflation like there usually is. And so if you look at the military, in the military, the people that are talking about how to reduce risk, you know what their strategy is? It's to increase flexibility. Same thing, it's, it's increasing options. And how do they do that? In the military, that means training your soldiers better. And again, that's expensive because what that means is you can't do the cheapest thing, which is just having the, the guys at the Pentagon like map out the, the battle ahead of time and just, you know, you don't need to have as well-trained soldiers. You just say, do this exactly like we've mapped it out. But flexibility requires that you have people on the ground who are smart enough to adapt as the battle's unfolding. And they have multiple different things in their arsenal, their strategies that they know that they can tap into to accomplish a mission. But again, that, that's expensive. So cash creates optionality. It's got some expense to it. Training soldiers better has some optionality, has some expense to it. If you look at the world of uh, professional surfing, I'm, I'm going all over the place here, aren't I? In, in the world of professional surfing, you, you'll see guys wait for the fourth wave. Often waves come in, in batches, right? So um, they might see the, a wave come and it's the, it's the best wave they've seen in a while. And they're thinking I should catch that wave, but they don't because if you get caught under that first wave and, and something goes wrong, and you get smashed down to the bottom of the ocean by that, by that wave, you can run out of breath before the second and third wave have passed, which keep crashing you back down as you're trying to swim back up and the next wave hits you. So it's safer to wait for that fourth wave, even if it's not the best wave. So what you've done is you've created optionality. You can say, I'm, gonna, I'm going to take that fourth wave, but it comes with a cost in the sense that it, you might have missed the best wave that was say wave number one or, or number two in that cluster. So it comes with a cost, but by paying that for that cost, you have the option to keep surfing, right? You, instead of um, taking a risk with your life. And so when you think about risk and how it applies to your productivity, this is the main thing that I've noticed with the entrepreneurs that I work with is that when you start dealing with decisions that have to do with increasing your risk, the decision fatigue that comes from those kinds of decisions is a lot higher than most of the other kinds of decisions that you make. Whenever you feel in control, your stress goes down. And, and so when the stakes are high, when you feel like if we're wrong on this decision and there's a lot of risk, there's a lot at stake here, then you feel stressed because you, you have less control. Really anxiety is a combination of how much do you care about something times how much can you control the outcome. So if either of those, either side of that variable is lower, then you tend not to feel very stressed. So what do you do then when you feel like, okay, I know, I feel like I know what I should do, but there's this high risk. In that scenario, what you want to do is you want to look for the option to pay something to reduce that risk. And this is why in the productivity and decision-making coaching that I do with entrepreneurs, we're always looking for the decision path that leaves the most options open. That comes with a little bit of cost, but usually the cost is worth it in terms of the speed that you gain because you have increased certainty when you bake optionality into your, your plan. So that, it's probably a bit too abstract. So let's just bring this down to an example level. If we're trying to decide if we should move forward with making a large purchase, let's say a machine that accomplishes something for us, and that machine could potentially triple the revenue that your business is, is driving each, each month. But there's a huge risk because what if it turns out there's not enough demand for you to use the machine to supply for your customers? And so that's the kind of scenario where it's possible that the cost of that machine is so high that it could put you out of business if you buy it and then it turns out you don't have the demand for it. Sometimes though, when we examine situations like this, the, the thought tendency is for us to be all or nothing. And decision, uh, the, the uh, people who study decisions and humans and how humans make decisions tell us that one of the most common mistakes we make as humans when facing a decision is dichotomous thinking, all or nothing, either or. It's like we either buy the machine or we don't. So what we try to do is increase the options. We try to say, all right, we're going to make the assumption 
that there are more than these two options available, even though those are the only two that we can see right now. And then we go to work brainstorming. Well, what could happen? Well, what if we shared the cost of the machine? What if it turns out that we can buy that machine and we can return it maybe at 80% of the, the cost of what we bought it for after a year, we could sell it used. And often what happens is those kinds of options reveal themselves only because we said we want increased certainty and we're willing to pay the price in terms of slowing down to think about it and giving up maybe the, the maximum gain that we could have had if we just went all in with that one risk. And instead we said, how can we go a little bit slower where we may have a little bit less uh, total uh, upside, but what we receive as a result of paying that price of slowing down and looking at all of our, all of our options and maybe not going for the one that has the most lucrative, absolute highest upside potential is that we often create scenarios where we've left ourselves a lot of options so that if we're right or if we're wrong, we're ready to move forward from there in such a way that we don't feel stressed. Now, here's what happens. When you do that, you speed up because people move at the speed of certainty. When you are certain about what you, you need to do, you're certain about what you want, you're certain about the plan to get there, you start moving faster. This is the psychology of productivity, is that you will move faster. And, and it's in ways that are hard to fully explain because it's so dynamic, it has to do with not putting on the brakes psychologically it has to do with the excitement and motivation of of not having a divided sort of a kind of want to do this but i'm also afraid there's a lot of reasons for it but your team will sense it it'll it'll come out in your own enthusiasm you will move faster if you're certain and how can you increase certainty by building plans that allow some level of optionality and that's something that's worth paying for because it will ultimately speed you up so here's your challenge for this week if you face a decision this week, any decision, even a small one, I challenge you to look for a way to increase your sense of certainty by trying to think of how could I approach this decision in such a way that it leaves me with the most options possible so that even if I'm wrong, I can still move forward. One of the most common ways that I see this available for entrepreneurs is when we start facing the resistance to hiring people. Often, of course, the, the response I get when, we, when we're looking at somebody's schedule is just too much. The entrepreneur is trying to do too much themselves. Of course, we're saying, well, let's bring in somebody to take some of those things off your plate. So you can focus on the few things that you do best. That's where the highest value is that you can bring to the company. And the objection that I hear from that is, well, I'd love to, but nobody can do it but me. And what that really means is I'm not ready to pay the price that I think it would take to find someone with high enough skill to be able to come in and do something that I'm naturally good at, that I've already got the skill and the ability to do. There's other reasons, like it would, might take time to train them and whatever, but that's the main thought process when it comes to that, that particular objection, that nobody can do it but me, is that thought that, well, it would just cost too much. It's not that I'm saying I'm the best in the world and the only one in the world. What I'm saying is we don't have the budget right now to hire someone with my level of skill. So if that's what you're thinking, I challenge you to consider what would happen with the revenue if that person was in place. In other words, how fast is the turnaround on ROI if you did find that person, you did pay for them to do that because somebody's doing that in your business, right? And so if somebody is doing that and it has a positive ROI and it's you, then it makes sense that that should mean that we could plug someone else into that role and that, that would also generate the same level of revenue, increased revenue in addition to and beyond the cost of that person's salary. And if that's not true, then why are you doing it? If you spending your time doing that thing costs the, the company more than it, than it actually brings in, then why are you doing that at all? Often the answer is, well, because that's one necessary piece and it's not everything that I do, but it's one thing that I do that, you know, we can't really function without it, but we need to have that done. And so what entrepreneurs fail to do is they fail to look at the bigger picture in their business and consider if I wasn't doing this, what increased revenue would happen over here in this other area that I could put more time, energy and attention into. So my challenge for you is to look at the decisions that come up this week and ask yourself, how could I increase the optionality and what would I have to pay to get a little bit more optionality? And if I did that, would it give me a greater sense of certainty in the direction that I've chosen? such that I then make faster progress. See you again next week.